Hi, my name is Tim Stokes of Profit Transformations and welcome to the webinar on five strategies to double the cash in your bank in 90 days. The webinar contents is how to extract money from customers with one simple question. The one word to add to your invoices to get paid on time. How to train your clients to pay on time. Why account staff can be draining your bank account and how to prevent it. And what 90% of retailers do and some service businesses that can send them broke. That's what we'll be covering in this webinar today. Who is this webinar for? Business owners who want a lot more cash in their bank. Who want better, more productive staff. Who want less frustrations with clients not paying on time. Who want more time and less busyness. Who want to put an end to hope. It may sound strange, but I believe hope, even though it's one of the most popular strategies in the world, doesn't grow your business. So let's stop hoping and let's start being confident about what it is that we're doing in business to make us more money. It's for business owners who want to pay themselves what they deserve. I meet very few overpaid business owners. One of my clients pays himself $400,000 a year and there's some little bit extra money that comes from his business as well. That's a pretty reasonable salary to be paying yourself. And he works about three or four days a week, sometimes takes a couple of months off. Now I think that's pretty much what business owners deserve because of the work and the stress and the pressure that they're under in growing their business and all the responsibility they take on. So that's for you if you're one of those business owners wanting to deserve more and be paid more for what you feel you deserve. A bit about my background. I've owned seven businesses since 1983 when I started my very first one. I worked as a contractor for 25 different businesses in the same industry. That's when my eyes were opened that success in business isn't an accident. It's not a result of the industry, it's a result of a mindset, a way of thinking about businesses. And after working for them for quite a period of time, it became obvious why some were very, very successful, making a lot of money, growing their businesses rapidly, and while others were failing and struggling all the time with cash to grow their business. And that gave me some great insights and began my entrepreneurial success journey. I became a pioneer for the business coaching industry in 1997, joining the industry back then. I've trained 35 business coaches internationally in the UK, in USA, in New Zealand and Australia. And I've trained about 1,260 plus businesses how to solve the common frustrations and challenges that you deal with in business on a regular basis like lack of time, always being busy, poor cash levels in the business to allow you to grow the business, finding good staff, and separating yourself from the business to have the quality of life that you desire. Here's a snapshot of a few results with clients over the years. Here's a business that got stuck at a ceiling of $2 million. Now, in Australia, it's an interesting statistic that 94% of all businesses never get beyond $2 million. And this is a business that was similar to that. They'd grown and grown over the years, but they got stuck at this plateau level that a lot of businesses get at, get to. They plateau at a certain level, and they'd plateaued at $2 million. But six months later, we'd added $980,000 to their sales without spending a cent or a dollar more on anything to do with marketing. It was just purely from the strategies that I teach Next sum was for a client up the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. His profit increased and cash in the bank $120,000 in one quarter of 2013. And he didn't need to hire any more staff. His business had not grown in its size and capacity. And the third one, Tim's training helped me increase my conversion rates from 30% to 55% in three months to almost double his turnover just from conversion rates alone. And that was for a kitchen renovation company in Sydney. So these are just a snapshot of some of the results that I've achieved over years, just to give you an idea of what sort of things can be achieved when you choose the right strategies and learn to execute them really effectively. 1,260 plus clients taught me a lot too. I learned so much from my clients over the years. 
I found that all of them wanted solutions to these four common challenges. And these are challenges I find nearly everyone in business deals with in trying to grow their business. The first one is a cash flow problem, a lack of cash. The second one is a lack of time. The third one is finding good staff, motivating them, and being able to hire them. Growth, getting enough customers to allow your business to grow at whatever speed that you like. So if I said to you, how many of these four challenges are you dealing with right now, what would your answer be? Would you say two or three or four? I found that by surveying business owners in seminars for 14 years and asking these sort of questions, the most common answer is three and usually four. If you don't have any staff and you're just starting your business, then you probably don't have some of these challenges. You probably don't have a lack of time or a staff problem. Maybe you have a growth problem or a cash flow problem. So they are very common. Solving these over 10 years, in my first 10 years, identified a business growth formula. And by implementing them in a certain order, these strategies to solve these problems, everything became easier. So here's my seven step business growth formula. The first one is that I don't start with getting more customers or making the phone ring more. I like to start with a vision. What's the vision for you as a business owner? Because if you've got employees, it's absolutely essential you enroll them in what the vision is for your business. That's the first step, believe it or not, that I found I need to work with with business owners first. By not doing this, we get sidetracked by little problems that get in the way and we, we run around chasing our tail with things that are not that important sometimes in growing their business. So I found that this is a fundamental first step that I always do with every client. And when I do it, they always say, I really needed that. <laughs> That's why I do it as the first step. And that commonality creates unity because when you have that vision, then the next step is team building. And that's where you share that vision with your team. By doing that, it enthuses your team to want to change, to go on a journey with you to achieve that vision. Now, if you want to grow a business, growth by definition means change. You must change things if you want to grow something. If you want to grow a business, it has to change. So by getting the team more warm to the idea of change by giving them a vision, instead of saying there's going to be a lot of changes in this business and people don't like that, what you're saying is this is a vision I'd love to see realized in this business. These are some of the goals that I'd like to see. I'd like to double its size in five years or two years or six months. Whatever that is, when you do that, it gets your team more interested in the benefits and the vision and it rolls them, enrolls them in it so then you don't have to talk about change. It's just an organic process. Now, team building warms the team up to the idea of measuring. And I found that when you introduce measuring before team building, you get resistance. But if we've team built first, then the team get happier because of the vision and because some of the team building exercises I show, measuring happens a lot easier. And when you measure, you, it reveals obvious, incredibly obvious profit opportunities. And I don't mean one or two. I mean, by measuring one area of your business, I can find 10 to 25 or more profit opportunities just from looking at the numbers. And that's how you increase profits in any business rapidly. You just find them. There's profit leaks and there's profit opportunities and measuring does that. Measuring is what leads to planning. So planning comes up to, after measuring because you identify the areas to apply strategies to. You measure and then you find profit opportunities and those profit opportunities turn into actions or strategies. Systems are needed in the business about this time and you'll find that by measuring, you have a lack of systems. You'll find inefficiencies, you'll find inconsistencies and that all hurts your profits. So systems need to be used by all the team. So when you measure and then you introduce measuring, your team start to understand because they're involved with the measuring, they start to understand that your business really needs systems and then you don't need to try and persuade them to use them. They realize that they're, they're an absolute necessity and then they'll say things to you like, boss, I think we need systems. I, I think we need a system for this. And now they're involved with systems instead of trying to get them introduced and they're resisting that. When we put the systems in place, and there are certain systems, I won't go into details here, you're getting the business ready to grow faster. 
And that's what step six is about. Now we're ready to generate a lot more customers and that's what marketing does. But we need to get the marketing working so well that it warms people up before they contact your business. And then the salespeople convert them. Now warm people ring up and say, wow, I read your marketing, I saw your website and look, your business sounds fantastic. Um, I'm interested in knowing more about what you do. That's a warm prospect. A cold prospect with poor marketing, which is quite common in the marketplace, someone will ring up and say, oh, yeah, I want to know how much it costs for such and such. Or do you sell such and such? How much does that cost? The first thing they talk about is price because they're cold when they ring up. They're not warmed up from your marketing. So that's step six. But part of that is having a great team that is eager and happy to serve customers and go that little bit extra. So we do team building earlier so that when we start warming people up from the marketing, they're not let down by the customer experience. And we're ready to be the explosive growth because your team are used to change because we introduce it to them very, very early. So when you follow these first six steps, you'll find that you start to move more into a management role of your business. You move out of the technical technician mode and out of sales and you move more into management. And management is a three to five day a week full-time job. But unfortunately, I see very few business owners managing their business because they're not looking at numbers and introducing strategies, which is the two primary aspects of management. Analyze, strategize. Look at the numbers and say, gee, I need to do this and that's gonna make me more profit. So I'm going to implement that strategy. Then I'm going to measure the result See if it worked and good, let's introduce another strategy or refine the existing strategy. Now that's what makes you a lot of money in business. Management, analyzing and implementing strategy is what makes you a lot more profit without it increasing your turnover. So if you like the idea of accessing the free dormant money in your business, then that's what management's about. And these six steps or these six subjects, if you like, are what management of a business is all about refining all six of those. So follow this formula and your challenges disappear. Those four challenges of cash flow and time and finding good staff, all those sort of things start to disappear simply by following this formula. All right, so let's talk about three of those areas, three of those seven different subjects. So you get a bit of a a better handle on what these are all about and the benefits of developing these. So today we'll consider five different strategies to double the cash in your bank in the next 90 days or so, maybe sooner, maybe later. And the strategies are going to relate to these subjects. Team training, systems for profit growth and sales strategies. They're the three areas that these strategies fall under. Systems for increasing the cash in your bank, sales strategies and team training. We'll also look at the cause of cash flow symptoms or cash flow problems, not just the symptoms. I find business owners talk about a poor cash flow problem and then I ask or look at what sort of strategies they're using to try to resolve it and they're not really going to put a big improvement into the business in that area because they're dealing with symptoms and they're not aware of that. So I want to talk about the real cause, the number one cause of poor cash flow. Do you know what it is? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? If you don't, that's okay. We'll talk about that very soon. I want to introduce you to what I call the easy profits principle. This is a principle of how to make profits that a lot of people in business are just not seeing. So I want you to get this into your mind and it's a mindset of easy profits by following a certain principle. And it's just a smart way of running a business. All right, so let's talk about common business growth. So what happens in a business is the business grows over time. The turnover keeps increasing, unless you've hit that plateau stage. But let's say you haven't and your business keeps growing over time. Well, let's say that this business in an example has grown from half a million dollars and maybe four or five years later, it's grown to two million dollars in turnover revenue. Then we look at the profit and the profit, well, most business owners, once a year, they talk to their accountant about this subject. And they say, what has my revenue been? What has my profit been? Oh, the profit's gone up good. The turnover's gone up good. Business is fantastic. Life's great. And so they look at the net profit. But what they're missing is the most important number there is in any small, medium business. And that is this figure. 
the net profit margin. That's the percentage net profit that your business operates with. So if we divide 75,000 net profit into 500,000, we get 15%. If we divide 150,000 into 2 million, we get 7.5%. So what we're seeing is the profit margin has halved. Now this is incredibly common. I see this with profit and loss statements of three years, which is what happens with our advanced training. I'll look at every client's profit and loss statement for the last three years historically and look at what the business is doing. And it's very, very common to see net profit margins the same or decreasing. Very rarely do they increase. In fact, a lot of the clients we have, they went from 10% to minus five. And that's why they're desperate. That's why they're doing the training because they're in dire straits. They're, they're seriously running out of cash they're trading potentially insolvent. They're using external assets to be sold to keep the business growing, and that's when they come to us. But the good news is, by realizing this a long time ago when working with clients, our training has become exceptionally refined at increasing net profit margins. Now you can read more about this subject and find out the benchmark for your industry. What's the average of the net profit margin of your whole industry? by reading a really good book that I wrote a few years ago called The Management Secret. Now, if you want that book, just send an email or if you're on the website and you're wondering where to get it from because you're watching this video as a recording, then go to Profit Transformations with a number four in it, .com, and you can subscribe there and you get the first book as a, as a bonus, as a gift, as part of our newsletter subscription. So you can get that book there if you like. But I encourage you to look at your last two or three years, minimum two years of your profit and loss statement to see what your own net profit margin has been doing. Is it going up or is it going down? All right, so that's the common business scenario. So let me talk to you about what I call the easy profits principle. Imagine your business is like this big blue bucket and the size of the bucket is relative to the turnover of your business. So the higher your turnover, the bigger your blue bucket. And your business does work. And as a result of doing that work, then it has a lot of costs involved in running the business. And after the income comes in, there's a little bit of profit that comes out. So like the example before, where we're turning over $2 million, well, only $150,000 is left in the profit bucket. So that's like this picture here. So what we'd like to do is have more profit in the profit bucket. So imagine that the, the water coming into the top of this bucket streaming in is like the inquiries coming into your business. And those inquiries, their profit leaks is a result of your business operating. You may not have a 100% conversion rate from every person that contacts your business that buys. That's a profit opportunity. It's a profit leak. So in business, you got two choices. You could say, well, I want to increase my profit by getting a bigger blue bucket, which means I need to get my phone to ring more, I need to get into social media marketing, I need to do Google AdWords, I need a new website, and spend, 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 time or money or both, and generate more water into our bucket. And that will give you a bigger profit bucket. But keep in mind, the vast majority of businesses as their turnover goes up, their net profit margin goes down. So what it means is the blue bucket gets bigger and bigger, but the profit bucket doesn't get that much bigger. The proportions change. So let me ask you this, is it smarter to increase the water as in the leads coming into a business like this scenario, or to plug the holes in the bucket to increase profit? Which is smarter do you think? Yeah, I'm getting a few answers. It's, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Well, plugging the holes. So if we plug the holes in a business, it makes a tremendous difference to the profits really fast. Whereas generating leads, if you wanted to double your profit, it's actually not that hard by plugging leaks. But if you want to double your profit, that means you need twice as many leads coming into your business. You need twice the turnover, which means you need twice the number of staff to still make the same profit. That's if your profit margin doesn't decrease as your turnover increases, which happens the majority of the time. So this is why I call it the easy profits principle. So instead of duplication, we use innovation. We do things differently with how you answer the phone, with how you price things, with how you talk to your employees. 
you're running team meetings, some of those things out of the seven different steps in the formula, you apply a lot of these things and you'll find that you start to plug a lot of profit leaks very, very quickly and your profit bucket starts to increase sometimes two or three or four fold in size proportional to your turnover and yet you haven't actually increased the leads at all. Does that sound easy? Believe it or not, it's actually easier to increase profits in a business than what it is to increase customers. Now, I found that hard to believe years ago until I got quite good at this by a lot of practice. And now I can make that statement. That's a statement of fact. It is actually so much easier to increase profits in a business compared to turnover and sales and customers. So let's talk about some of the causes of cash flow problems. So this is the number one cause, not the symptom, the cause of low profit or low, sorry, the cause of low cash problem is that the net profit margin is low. Now, some people say to me, Tim, what should my net profit margin be? Now, that's a really, really interesting question. And I'm wondering, is anyone ever asked that question? It's, it's not something I've even thought about myself for until the last five years I've started to, to think about this question. So I say this, when your turnover gets up to about a $700,000 level, now if, if you're 200,000, your net profit margin might be 35% or 50%. So what happens is your turnover goes up, you need to hire more staff, you need to hire an admin person, you need phone, you may need an office or premises, you need to work. All of a sudden, all those extra costs and overheads kick in, but at $700,000, they don't tend to increase or accelerate as what they were from the $200,000 to the $700,000 figure. So I say this, at $700,000 or a million or $5 million, you want to be at a minimum 15%. Now, the clients I work with over the years, I measure everything I teach, and I teach them how to measure, and I find out what works and what doesn't. And something I've noticed over the years, I can look at their profit and loss statement and I see their net profit margin. And then I give them a cash flow measuring tool and I see how much cash they have in the bank. And by comparing the two, what I've learned and what I've determined is that if your net profit margin is under 15%, you will nearly always, not every time, but nearly always have a cash flow problem. So you want to get your net profit margin to 15%. Now, I didn't read this in a book. It's not some academic theory. It's pure experience. It took a long, long time to draw that conclusion. Now, that's an average. It may need to be higher to solve your cash flow problems, but only anything under 15% about that turnover, you will tend to have a cash flow problem. So you're treating the symptoms when you say, I need to improve my cash flow. Well, you can do the things that I'm talking about in this webinar, but that is the number one cause of cash flow problems in the majority of businesses. The next one is that the cause of a cash flow problem is that it's in the customer's cast sorry, it's in the client's or customer's bank account instead of it being in yours. You've done the work but that you haven't been paid for it. The third one is the profit leaks that I touched on before due to well a whole different lot of reasons. This is a big subject, but to give you a summary, lack of team building as a focus when you team build you make people happier happier people happier people do more work for what you're paying them if people do more work for what you're paying them your profit increases the next one is the owner is not implementing strategies because the business owners are not managing their business they're too busy doing the technical work or the sales work and things like that so they're not really implementing strategies they're just doing what employees do instead of doing what managers should do the next one is no systems. They don't have a system for pricing and the pricing system controls the net profit margin at the time of sale very, very accurately. Very few businesses have that. There's not enough training on systems. The conversion rates may be too low. So they're, the business owners assume that it's pretty high, like 50% or 60%. They're not measuring it. If they measured it, they find out it may be 20% or 15% or 30%. That's another profit leak in the business. And there's no systems for measuring. They're not really measuring much of anything in the business, so they're not finding those profit leaks that are occurring in the business. So they're three the most common. Another one is that there is no marketing system for getting customers to come back again. They rely on new customers and do very little to nothing 
to generate the second, third, fifth, tenth sale, and it's all sequenced as a as a rollout of a marketing system. They're not using a CRM that can manage all that. They're not categorizing their business into different things that people sell. And they might sell five or ten or fifteen or twenty-five things, and they're saying, "Well, if someone buys one of these things, maybe they could buy the other five or six or." 15 other things as well so we need to have a proactive marketing system that chases that work and they then have the email template set up as well so these are common causes of cash flow problems these sort of things these are some of them it's not all of them but there's a good start all right so cash flow and profit margins explain let me give you a nice simple way of understanding the relationship between profit margins and cash in the bank and how the two tie in together now this may be a little bit simple for you. I know some of the people on this webinar are accountants and excuse me while I go very, very simplistic here, but I like to do basic stuff first, explain real basics, then we can get into the more advanced. But if I do advanced before basics, people don't grasp what I'm talking about. So forgive me if I'm going a bit too basic here for some of you. So let's take a sample business and it has a net profit margin of 5%. We divide the turnover by the net profit and we get this ratio of five percent so let's say a customer pays a thousand dollars for buying something a purchase and that's a thousand dollars of cash received to the business so what that means is we have to cover every cost of sale and all the expenses out of every individual sale proportionally that's the best way of thinking about it because your turnover is a combination of every strategy averaged out and um, every sale, sorry, averaged out and every cost averaged out. So let's say that this is what we need to do. It's a good way of thinking in business. So we average out all the costs in the business and with a 5% net margin, that means that 95% is all cost of sale and expenses. So what we're left with is $50 cash in the bank. This business will have a cash flow problem. Now let's have a look at comparing it to another business that has a net profit margin of 20%. So the customer spends the same amount of money, $1,000, the cash comes into the bank account. The cost of sale and expenses comes out as 80%, which is $800 coming out, and the business has $200 left in the bank account. Now, is it pretty obvious how net profit margin relates to cash flow? We've got four times more cash in the bank when we have four times higher net profit margin. So this business is unlikely to have a cash flow problem because not, the cash is not coming in and going back out. The cash is coming in and more of it's staying in before it goes out or it's not going out again. So this is how net profit margin directly relates to cash flow. So when people say, I've got a cash flow problem, my first question is, what is your business's net profit margin? And let's talk about getting that up. It is the number one way to solve the cash flow problem in any business. Number one way. There are other ways, but that's the number one. So the best profit strategy is that. If your net profit margin is 5%, here's the question. What do you think it would be after a 10% price rise? Now, a lot of people in business say, well, I'm going to lose a lot of customers if I do. I say, well, maybe that's not all bad. <laughs> You do less work for um, sometimes you can counteract it. The price rise counteracts the, the loss. So you're actually making more profit. And my question to you is, what do you want to do? Do you want to make more profit or do you just want to make more turnover? Which is better? So if your turnover per year was a million dollars and your net profit margin was 5%, then you would have a net profit of 50,000. So see if you can guess what the outcome would be with a 10% price rise. So if, let's say we put a 10% price rise into the business. What do you think the new net profit margin would be? Have a guess. Because at the moment it's 5%, and we put a 10% price rise in. Does it go up by 10%? couple of people think yes okay it actually goes up by a lot more than that someone saying 15% would be the new figure that's not too far off here's the math after the price rise the net profit margin would be 13.6% and the net profit hundred and thirty six thousand dollars so it's gone up over double a lot higher eighty six thousand dollars is a huge net profit increase in the business 
we've nearly tripled the net profit margin from 5 to 13.6. It's a huge difference. Now, because we've made so much increase in profit, do you think we could afford to drop some of the turnover and lose some customers and still have a lot more profit? Well, the answer is absolutely. Absolutely, that's something you should be strongly considering. Even if you lose customers, you could still be miles in front from a net profit percentage or net profit in the bank position. So sales are not money, they are income but not profit. And profit is what pays the wages of someone that would dramatically free up your time. It's not the turnover coming in because that's turnover in and that's money in, that's money out. It's not about the turnover. So if your net profit is zero, net profit margin is zero, all the money that comes in goes back out. So I get impressed with businesses that have 15 to 25 or 35% net profit margin. I don't get that impressed with businesses that are turning over $5 million. If their net profit margin is 2 or 3 or 5%, that, that doesn't get me that excited. I get excited by hearing businesses that are turning over $2 million with a 26% net profit margin like my clients. That's what gets me excited. So money is, when people in business sometimes say, I need more money, so I need more customers. Well, that doesn't really add up because activity is not profit doing lots of work and getting lots of customers is not profit that's just activity that's income that's turnover so keep that in mind about this principle where it's actually better to have less customers making more profit because then it frees up your time than what it is to just get more customers and increase your busyness so just keep that in mind so What's your profit margin increase strategy? Price rise is one, but there are a lot of ways, directly or indirectly, to increase your net profit margin. I've had accountants say, there's only two ways, Tim. You can reduce costs or increase turnover without increasing cost proportionally. That's the only two ways. Okay, sure. That's the principle, but there are a lot of ways to increase net profit margins and the way you go about executing it is not just those two basic principles. Yes, that's the outcome, but there are ways of doing that. All right, so plugging leaks is a solution. Let's talk about that. Learn how to plug leaks, and that's mastering the subject of management. So management is about increasing your net profit margin. And that's what we want to do. We want to raise your net profit margin. Now, if you think about CEOs of public companies, CEOs of public companies are not super technicians that have been at the company 20 years and gradually moved all the way up to that general manager CEO position. That's not what happened. They're typically recruited from completely outside the industry and they're recruited and paid the big bucks and multi-million dollar salaries from completely outside of that core industry that they were recruited from. Why are they paid millions of dollars a year and yet they don't know anything about the technical aspects of a business? It's because they're exceptional at increasing profits in a business, which means that the net profit margins don't decrease. They typically go up. That's a good manager. So this is all about the subject of management. And business owners, their mindset is not management. They're not really managing much at all. They're not analyzing and strategizing. So it's a mindset that you get. And when you get this mindset, you find so many ways to plug leaks and your profit margins start to jump, sometimes double, sometimes triple, sometimes quadruple. Some of our clients have quadrupled their net profit margin by adopting this management mindset. So the key to do that is just start measuring. That's the number one thing. Don't assume anything because assumptions don't increase profits. Find something that moves and measure it. Measure everything and measure everyone. <laughs> And you'll find there are massive variables everywhere. And those variables could mean a profit loss or a profit opportunity. I found that measuring always reveals profit opportunities. But it comes down to knowing what to measure as well. So higher profit margins create cash. That's what they do. You, you increase profit margins, you have more cash in the bank. That means you can afford to pay another employee or maybe two. And if you employ an employee or two to do what you do, we freed up your time. 
And as we free up your time, then you can move out of sales and production or finance or admin, move into management, and then you're working on your business to implement strategies, and that's how you work your way out of a business to the point where work becomes optional. Does anyone here like the idea of work becoming optional? It's a choice. Whether you work at all or how many days a week you do work. Getting a few yeses to that one. Yes, excellent. All right. So are you prepared to learn management as a subject which is completely unrelated to your industry? So if you're a plumber, it's got nothing to do with plumbing. If you're a builder, it's got nothing to do with building. If you're an accountant, it's got nothing to do with accounting. It is about management as a subject. And management is not related to an industry. It's a skill set that goes across every industry like the CEOs can come from one public company to another public company and get paid two, three, five, ten million dollar plus, hundred million dollar salaries a year, and that's because they've got management expertise. So what is business management? There's a good question. Let's answer it nice and simply. It's development of what these three vital skills are. The first one is people. Having the skills to identify good attitude and good aptitude people before you hire them. That is a fantastic people skill. Having great salesmanship, sales skills where you talk to a person and, and they pay full price and you convert a huge percentage of those, a majority of people, if not all the people that contact your business, you persuade them to buy it. That is a people skill. Marketing is a people skill because it's understanding how people think and appealing to their emotive side to make those decisions. So that is a skill in business. It's an essential skill. That is a management skill, getting the best out of people, being a great leader. The next skill of business is measuring, being exceptionally good at understanding numbers and knowing what to measure, how to measure, and why you need to measure certain things. The third vital skill is systems. So if you've got any systems that um, you wish your employees would follow or use, that's an example. That is a skill in itself. I see systems that business owners read. I try to read them sometimes and I go, oh, I don't even know what you're talking about. You lost me. I don't understand your instructions. Now, if you ever read instructions and not understood them, and other times you've read instructions and thought, gee, this is so easy. Well, that's a skill. A skill is in how to put systems together. And... These days they're not documented, they're digitized. So I'm a very big believer of having systems that are just purely digital. Could be video, could be audio, could be PDF, could be a spreadsheet. Doesn't have to be a document, it could be all sorts of things. So these are the three essential skills of management. They're three vital skills of management. And to me, the best example of a really, really well managed company in the world is what? Can anyone guess? Yes, well done. You got it. My McDonald's. And McDonald's, I believe, is the best managed company in the world. Why? Because they've got some of the highest net profit margins I've ever seen in all different industries. They're cash cows. The business owners don't need to work in them. And the teenagers run it. And it's running like 25, 35% net profit margins higher, sometimes lower. So they've developed these three skills. If you read a really good book called Under the Golden Arches, it talks about the decades of evolution that McDonald's went through. And they started with expensive chefs. Expensive chefs they had to pay high salaries to who were specialists that had to make the food for the franchise, for the McDonald's stores. And then what do they do? They measured, they systemized. And by measuring and systemizing, then they started to get better attitude people that had less skills, less specialized skills, so their, their profits weren't gone in wages with super technicians and super specialists, which is what chefs were when they started, they started to simplify the labor because they're measuring their systems improve. And that's the magic of combining all three skill sets. When you combine all three, magic starts to happen. The synergy of combining all three instantly starts to increase profit margins, sometimes dramatically, sometimes triple, sometimes quadruple. My record is over 400% increase in net profit in business in the space of months. 
when they were reasonably profitable to begin with. Other clients we've had, I've had clients that are minus 10% net profit margin and taken them to plus 12 in six months. So like a 22% increase in net profit margin in six or so months. So radical, incredible things happen when you combine all three of these. Now this is all about putting cash in your bank because if we increase your margins, we put more cash in your bank. These are the essential skills. Now this is a simplified version because under the heading of people, people skills comes influence skills, leadership skills, aptitude determining skills, attitude determining skills, sales skills. All these are skills that come under people. Measuring, categorizing the different skills. Systems, categorizing the different skills and different subject matter. So this is just a broad overview summary, but this is management. This is what it is. All right, so skills to manage people. If you look at it, I'll give you an example of some with employees. And this is about how to get the best out of people. Because if you can get your employees, and I've, I've had a client that increases productive time by 50% in one week with a team building skill, with a people skill. He said, my staff just produce 50% more in the last week. And I said, the same staff? He said, yeah. Same staff, 50% more output. I said, well, your net profit just increased 50%. And he goes, you're right. <laughs> Didn't think of that. And I said, well, that's exactly what happened. He said, you, yeah. So that's an example where people skills can increase your margins. Have you got employees that don't always do what you want? Have you got employees that forget things and you need to remind them? Have you got employees that do tasks their way? not the way you ask them to or explain to them to do. Do you have employees that don't think for themselves? They don't anticipate, they don't see when things aren't working. Now this is an example of four different things that are very common in businesses and your ability to solve these problems and prevent them from occurring in the future has got a lot to do with your net profit margin. So if staff to always do what you want, because you've trained them really, really effectively because you're an excellent teacher and an excellent leader and an inspirer and an influencer, then they do what you want all the time. They don't forget anything. And you learn to let staff go that um, are extremely forgetful and you can identify for forgetfulness versus attitude and things like that. And they do things your way. Why? Because you become an excellent teacher. You put a little why into training them. You find staff to do think for themselves because you get better at identifying that when you're recruiting them. So this is an example where these are skills with people that you can learn. You can learn all these skills. It's not hard to learn. You just need a bit of training sometimes. But that's an example with employees where skills of managing people increase your profits. Clients. You might have clients that complain about price. You might have ones that don't appreciate all the work you do for them. You might have ones that find reasons not to pay weeks after you've done the work and you're still wondering why you haven't been paid and you're chasing them for money and you find out. You might just have ones that hold out on paying you on time. So these are again four different areas that with developing skills with managing people you can dissipate, dramatically reduce these problems occurring with your clients because these are beneficial people skills. Now, people tend to frustrate business owners more than anything else. It can be very frustrating dealing with employees and clients. Well, I found that the better you get with people skills, the less frustrated you get with people because they do what you want them to do. And you rarely ever have to remind them. That is an incredible skill to have with people because you just get happier. Life becomes better. Business becomes more enjoyable. Is that something that you want? Well, those skills are available to learn. Very few people learn them, but they are available if you are sick of the frustration, if you want to improve your business, if you're willing to learn some things for a short period of time because you benefit for the rest of your life for something you just learned once in a short period of time. And that thinking is what led me to where I am now. Because I thought, I want to learn as much as I can, as quick as I can, because I intend to be in business for the rest of my life. Let's get the learning over with as quick as I can. Does anyone here think like that? That's how I live. That's how I think. I think it's a great way of thinking. Let's just get it over and done with. Let's learn as quick as we can, as much as we can, from the best people we can, get the learning over with, and just enjoy life. 
So we're not frustrated. We're not stressed. Let's just have a great time. That's what life is. A few of you are saying, yes, absolutely. Great. Good. Well, this is the opportunity. So let me give you an accounting firm case study. This is a two partner firm based in Brisbane. They had a cash flow problem. So let's talk about what happened and what the scenario was. They were owed $450,000 on a $520,000 turnover business, and it actually had a reasonably good net profit margin. So what do you think they had? They didn't have a net profit margin problem. What did they have? A huge cash flow problem. So sometimes it relates to net profit margin, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it certainly didn't because their net profit margin was actually quite healthy. The disc profile, I don't talk about this in this webinar, but this is the number one skill you can learn in business and it comes under the heading of people skills. Learn disc profiles. And don't say, yeah, I know about disc profiles. Well, if, if you say that, then I say, what's my disc profile? Can you pick the profile of every person on the phone that you've never talked to before in the first five to 30 seconds? That's mastering disc profiles. Become exceptional at it. But that's when the profits kick in. But in this case, what happened was he was an S profile and this particular accountant was a nice guy. He's a quiet spoken fella. He smiles a lot. He's easy going. And that was a weakness for him and his business. Now, what I found is that every disc profile, whichever one you are, has strengths and weaknesses. And guess what? One of them holds your business back a lot. Yes, and it's obviously the weakness. Now, for him, his S profile was too nice. That's why he was owed a huge amount of money, because he wasn't assertive enough to get the money from people. He worked really hard, but cash was an issue. So by helping him to realize that he was too nice, his strategy, well, my strategy with him became, I won't use his name, but I said, look, you're just a nice guy. Look at your disc profile. Um, he goes, yeah. I said, you're, you like to make people like you. you. You like to be well thought of. You don't like to complain. You you expect people to treat you well because you treat them well. He goes, yeah. I said, well, mate, that's holding you back. <laughs> that thinking is not making you money and it won't make you money. You've got to stop thinking everyone's nice and they're thinking about you all the time and they have lots of money and they love parting with it and giving it to you. That's just not going to help you make your money in your business. Now, I'm going to talk about some of the strategies I used to solve this problem for him a little bit later but the difference we made to his business was dramatic like huge and I'll talk about what the outcome was a little bit later here's another business that was struggling for cash it was a picture manufacturer in Western Sydney New South Wales they were always struggling for cash they work long hours they're a husband and wife team they had a low take-home salary when I found out how much they were taking home I thought well sell the business give it up <laughs> break even at least go and work for someone you work less hours and you make more money they were owed thirty-five thousand dollars to their customers and considering it wasn't a very big turnover business that was a lot of money there was no real turnover growth in the business at all and their turnover was about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars so it wasn't a big turnover at all they hadn't been going that long only had a few staff the net profit margin was ten percent and that wasn't too bad but it had contributing factor to the cash flow problem they had a week of turnover if cash in the bank that's all they ever had so turning over a week if you divide 450,000 by about 50,000 what do you get you get about nine thousand dollars a week so they had about six to eight to ten thousand dollars in the bank not a lot of money in the bank considering the wages bill considering other things I call that on the ragged edge of disaster so I'll talk about the outcome for this business a little bit later as well. But this is a scenario, and by putting in the strategies I'm going to talk about soon, we change this business dramatically in a space of weeks, two or three weeks, and dramatic increase in cash in the bank from the strategies I'll show you soon. So the good cash level test. Here's a simple way of looking at how much cash is a good indicator of how well your business is operating. My question is, how many weeks of turnover is in your bank account right now? Now, the picture framer, as I mentioned, they had about one week's worth of turnover. So that's what I'm talking about. So work that, work that out. And I rate that less than four is poor. So if you've got less than four weeks worth of turnover, now they had one week. So if they had less than, what did we say, 9,000 a week, four nines are 36. So if they had less than $36,000 in the bank, I would rate their business as poor from a cash availability ranking system. I consider four is just good. Anything under four, poor. 
and that's to me the minimum. Eight is very good. So that's like two months worth of turnover. So in this case, let's have a work it out. Eight times nine, that's 72,000. That's that's a good figure. Excellent will be 12. 12 nines, what's that? 100, 108,000. So it'd be nice to have $108,000 worth of turnover in the bank. Now this is my ranking system. How many businesses do you think get to good or very good or excellent? It's a good question. And I can tell you. Count them on one hand as a percentage. They'd be about 2%. 1% of businesses have that much cash available in the bank account. It's extremely uncommon. So what's your business's rank based on this scale? Now, you don't need to tell me. That's all right. But it's just a very good wake-up call time that if you're running with under four, one little hiccup from a major customer, a major, major job that goes pear-shaped, um, or a rogue employee that does bad things, or man, you, you're close to bankruptcy if you're running with less than four weeks. You are on the ragged edge of disaster all the time because of this scenario. And you can't think that it's not going to be a problem. The number one cause of failure is businesses run out of cash. That's it. So if you're running low, well, the tiny, the, the symptoms or the, the indicators are it's massive wake-up call time. Let's start solving the problems in your business. Because what businesses do, a lot of time they go and get an overdraft. Well, that costs you 2 to 3 to 5% of your net profit margin. That's hurting your cash flow even more to run an overdraft because of the cost of running it, the interest rates, things like that. The factoring, factoring is like 2 or 3% wipes out your net profit margin. It damages your net profit margin, which creates a compound effect of making it worse. So it's time to wake up people. It's time to start getting a reality check that you seriously need to do something about solving these cash flow problems and putting a lot of cash in your business bank account. So let me give you an example client result now. Here's a Logan Home accounting firm that after doubling his net profit without spending a cent on marketing or staff, that's, that's what happened as a result of this training. Now, advanced training. His turnover was 350000 He didn't have much of a turnover, but he actually told me he had a problem about a year after starting the training. He rang me up one day and said, Tim, I've got a problem. I go, huh, that's funny. I didn't think you had a problem anymore. He goes, well, well, not the sort of problem that I normally talk about, no. I said, oh, okay, what's the problem? He said, I don't know what to do with all this cash in my bank. <laughs> it was a funny it was a funny phone call. I just laughed because I said, well, I won't use his name. But I, I said, <laughs> I hope you don't want my help with that because I'm not a financial planner. I'm not a financial advisor. Look, there's so many things you could do with that money. But maybe you want to buy something with your company and um, that's an asset. Uh, buy a property, buy premises, buy something, shares, something. But do something with it. Don't just leave it there. It's just dead money. It's not working for you. You want money working for you when you make money. So you're not working for money. Money's working for you. So think about that. And he really only was owed less than four weeks of turnover. Now, for an accounting firm, that's exceptional because of, of like the accounting firm I gave you before, they were owed like nine months of turnover. He's owed less than four weeks. That, for an accounting firm, is pretty exceptional. So there, there are some interesting outcomes you can achieve when you start using these strategies I'm about to show you. So think about the choices too. What choices would it give him with that much cash available in his business? Now, all things being the same, that will keep increasing and increasing and increasing all the time because his margins are so good. And by having really high margins, your cash reserves just keep increasing. I had a lady in Sydney, same thing. She had a, a beauty business, hair and beauty. And um, she got to $60,000 in the bank and said, what the heck do I do with all this cash? I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so... It's an interesting scenario. It's an interesting problem that some of my clients, uh, we create problems at Profit Transformations, but they're the kind of problems that you, you love. Yeah, it's an interesting scenario. So yeah, but it gives you a lot of choices. You can afford to pay people. You could pay a manager and completely free up your time. You could invest in marketing and seriously do some extremely good marketing, like cutting edge, best in the world stuff that really cranks your business size up if you wanted to. You got a lot of choices. That's the best thing about it. All right, so choices with surplus cash. Well, for example, in this scenario, he could hire another accountant to free up his time. And that's a very, very good option. And say, well, I don't want to be an accountant. I want to be a manager. I want to play with strategies and analyze and implement and find out what works and what doesn't. He could 
spend twenty thousand dollars on really really good exceptional marketing on a really good website automated autoresponders free giveaways free books run events all sorts of things you could do with that he could hire a junior um, a really good strategy he could develop better systems and put some time and money into technology go online and uh, build intranet systems and all sorts of things he could outsource outsource work overseas now for an accounting industry accounting business this is a really good strategy but it takes a lot of time to develop now if you've if you can afford to employ an employee to do what you do and free up your time for this industry it becomes an exceptional strategy because it takes a lot of scrutiny to make sure the quality is there and a lot of research but when you figured it out your net profit margin can jump 10 percent you can add 10 percent to your net profit margin by doing this so all of these accelerate profits so there's a lot of different choices here you could do all of them actually and so many choices to do when you get those cash levels up all right so let's talk about the strategies and what they are so strategy number one let's extract money from people let's learn to get paid what we're owed by asking one simple question now people know of strategies but their execution is often poor now understand the difference between a choosing a strategy and executing a strategy I've had people say "Oh, I tried that that didn't work and then I've done the exact same strategy with a bit of kicking and screaming and debating sometimes and I've done the exact strategy they failed at and had phenomenal improvements in the business by using that so there's execution which is a real skill and I'm about to get really specific with the execution so if you haven't got pen and paper in front of you or something to type this down with make sure you do that right now because I'm going to give you really almost like magic the specific wording of exactly how to put these strategies and to make them work all right so here it is they simply asked this at the time of sale now this is what the picture framer said but it's really simple would you like to pay for that now that's it because when I talked to the picture framing business about their cash flow problems they said tell me about your sales process I said what do you want to know I said well tell me what gets said well someone walks into the factory and they say oh hi I got this frame I like picture I like to get framed they go sure and then they have a bit of a discussion and then they tell them the price they tell them the price and then the customer says yeah that sounds good or no that's I didn't want to pay that much whatever it is but they found their conversion rate was very good so what they found was that and then I said to the business owner okay so what happens next well then we do the order and we tell them we'll be ready on Friday next week come and pick it up then please oh okay all right so when are they paying you they said well when they pick it up I said well but you're incurring the cost for the whole week um, before they pay you. He said, yeah. I said, well, this is why you've got a cash flow problem. You're letting them have credit for, and you don't even know anything about them. You, you know their name and phone number, that's it. You don't know anything about them. You don't know their credit history. You don't know their financial position, and you're giving credit to people you don't know at all. You need to start asking for the money up front. And what do you think they said? Do you think they said, sure, Tim, we'll do that? Or do you think they said, oh, no, I can't do that well we're gonna to lose too many customers we're gonna lose a lot of sales we can't afford that that's that's exactly what they said and I said well I'll give you the specific words so when you talk about price and when you book the job in you just simply say would you like to pay for that now and they were scared of doing it but I measure everything I do so I said let's measure the before and after and guess how many sales they lost none <laughs> because the wording is very powerful particularly with some other things of being friendly with them and listening to them and talking to them have a good conversation then they say oh, I'd like to book that in great fantastic um, look it'll be fr ready for Friday next week look um, would you like to pay for that now yeah okay and they just said yes they were stunned they were sure they would lose a lot of sales and they didn't lose any all right so I've had accounting firms receive 25% more incomes on the spot by doing this strategy and they get that income instantly because see a lot of firms I know companies as soon as you buy the first time they want to give you a credit application which says oh we don't want money here why don't you get a credit application then you don't have to pay us for at least a month so some businesses are too invoice orientated and still instead of being cash orientated so I did this with, did this with an accounting firm bang instant jump in their cash in the bank straight away just by simply asking would you like to pay for that now when they see people and that's a good time to ask them 
So the picture framer received 100% of all sales income at the time of sale. So that's why they owed $35,000 because people didn't pick up their picture frame on the Friday. 20% of them did, we found. 80% of them picked them up in the next three or four or five weeks sometimes. They had to chase them. There's time and money lost in chasing people and taking out space and then you gotta find it because it's buried under so many other jobs. It was just super inefficient. So by asking this at the time of sale, a lot of cash in the bank. Such a simple strategy, but the execution, and notice the tone of voice I'm using when I'm saying this. I don't say, would you like to pay for that now? I don't use that tone of voice. It's, would you like to pay for that now? It's a courteous request, not a, would you like to pay for that now? So the execution is what makes this strategy work. All right, so strategy number two, add one word to your invoices. Have payment terms in bold letters and make sure it says this. Now, a lot of people say payment terms 30 days. So they're missing this one word. All payment needs to be received within days. So that's the wording. Don't just say net seven days or net 30 days or payment terms colon 30 days. Put this statement in all payments need to be received within the magic word is within x number of days that's the word because what happens unconsciously people see payment terms 30 days ago oh okay oh i got a month to think about that okay and then they think about it then they start paying at month 40 or 50 or day 40 or day 50 because they've got in their head think about it in 30 days time which means get around to it sometime after that you put the word within, they go, oh, within 30 days. Oh, okay, oh, probably should pay that soon. Within 30 days. That's that's the unconscious response to it. So this one word, I've seen businesses increase their cash position by 15, 20% just from putting this word on. All right, the third one, train your customers to pay on time. People are just like every other animal on the planet. They are trainable. And you train people to do what you want by being positive in how you communicate to them. Don't criticize them, don't complain, be positive. That's how you train animals. You don't train animals by criticizing them. You don't train people by criticizing them. You train them by being positive, being happy and encouraging. It's the same with customers. So people are creatures of habit. So teach them the habit of paying you on time. This becomes a habit. Now, when you've done this with customers that come back and buy from you repeatedly, and you do this three or four times, you'll find you don't have to keep doing it. But for the first three or four, maybe five times, you certainly need to. So calling them before the payment is due is the key. You call them before. So if you have terms 30 days and then you start calling people day 40, what have you taught them? You've taught them we don't really care about the money because we're not going to ask for it until 10 days past it's due. So we really don't want to be paid for 40 days. That's what you've taught them when you ring people after your payment term is past the due date. Do the opposite. So if it's day 30, you call them, or if it's invoices 30 day terms, you call them at day 25. You call them before, and you must keep calling them before, 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 and this is what you say. It's like, hey, Bob, we've noticed your invoice hasn't been paid and it's due before Friday. Would you be able to give me a credit card number so I can fix it up now? That's the wording. It's not, we've noticed your invoice hasn't been paid and it's due before Friday. Would you be able to give me a credit card number so I can fix it up now? So you don't want to be aggressive. You want to be courteous and friendly, just like training every animal. You don't train a dog to sit by yelling at it. You train a dog by being positive in the behavioral conditioning. So when they do what you want, you thank them for it too. You go, thanks, oh, that'd be greatly appreciated. Not, yeah, thinking to yourself, yeah, about freaking time. Like the way your demeanor in talking to people is the magic of the execution of this strategy. So we've noticed your invoice hasn't been paid and it's due before Friday. Would you better give me a credit card number now so I can fix it up or so I can fix it up now? It's just a nice, friendly way of saying it. That's it. So this is the magic of the execution of the strategy. That's how refined we've made this strategy over years and years. And just keep calling them every week. So let's say they say, oh, no, I can't pay that now. Then you ask this question, when do you think you could pay it? It becomes a when question. And whatever they say, you follow them up. Oh, look, um, 
Oh, look, I don't know if I can pay it until Wednesday. All right, well, look, they are our payment terms. We do expect to be paid before our due dates. That's why the wording says pay within on our invoices. We need to be paid that within that time frame. Look, I can let you off, but look, we definitely need to be paid by Wednesday. So, um, look, I'll give you a call. Bef I'll, be I'll give you a call on Wednesday if you, if you haven't been able to fix this up before then. And then you ring them exactly when you said you would. So if you said Wednesday, you ring Wednesday if you haven't been paid. And they're expecting you call. And when you ring, they're like, wow, they did what they said. Oh, gee. Uh, well, they did what they said. I didn't do what I said. Oh, I'm feeling guilty. I'm feeling bad. Oh, gee, I'm, I'm letting them down. And they've been so friendly to me and I'm letting them down. Gee, that's not very good. I need to make an effort. And that's what happens. It's like you reflect their behavior with your positive behavior. And that's how you start to train people. And if they say, oh, look, I'm really sorry I couldn't paint. Say, all right, well, what's happening then? Because uh, this is past the due date. Um, I've asked you to pay within the terms. You haven't. And now I've given you a reminder. So, well, what's happening? And when, when can we expect payment then? And that's what you're saying. You don't get angry. You don't get critical. You don't get aggressive because they just resent you. And then they give, you're giving them a reason not to pay you. Don't do it. It doesn't work. Be friendly and be courteous. And we found this works exceptional. Now, guess what happens the next time when they haven't paid you and it's day 25 and you ring them on day 25 again? Um, hey, Bob, we've noticed your invoice hasn't been paid and it's due before Friday. Would you be able to give me a credit card number now so I can fix it up? Or give me a credit card number so I can fix it up now? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then they pay you. Next time you ring on day 25, like, wow, they're consistent. They're going to ring me every time at day 25. Guess what happens the fourth time? Uh, they're going to ring me on day two, day 23. I better pay that invoice. Yeah, they're going to ring me otherwise. And I, I'm getting embarrassed because um, I let them down the first time and they've been so friendly. I'm, I'll just pay that on time this time. And that's what you've done. You've just trained them to pay on time. Now, this is a phenomenal strategy. It is so simple, but it doesn't happen instantly. But you're training your customers to pay on time. You just keep doing it and you'll find they start to pay you on time. It's a magic strategy. And this one strategy, we've had clients that have massively, rapidly increased how much cash they have in the bank in one or two months. They've had like quadruple the amount of cash, five times the amount of cash in their bank just from using this. All right, so accounting firm result. The company I told you at the start, they did apply this and they were owed that $450,000. But six months later, they were only owed one hundred and fifty. dollars so what did that mean? We brought in $300,000 in cash in that six month time frame. And the owner wasn't quite as nice anymore. Nice can, well, I like to say to some people, nice can mean nothing inside me cares enough about my success. So nice people sometimes don't care enough about their success and they expect other people to care, but they don't. Well, sometimes being too nice with people is how you become doormats and they just walk all over you. So you need to ask for money. You wanna be paid. You ask. If you don't ask, then they think you don't want it. That's the message you put out there by not asking for the money consistently within your invoice terms. So what could the business owner do with an extra $300,000 in cash in the bank? Man, that's, that's a lot of moolah. <laughs> it's a lot of cash. Yeah, yeah, a few people saying I could find a way to spend it. Yeah, absolutely, that's right wouldn't be hard to find ways of doing that but it's just the principle of what a difference you can make to your business just from implementing really well executed strategies what would you do yeah we've had a few answers all right so strategy number four why account staff can be draining your bank account now you may not have an accounts person but if you ever hire one you want to take really good note of what i'm about to say their idea, the employee accounts person's idea of a good job, I'm doing a good job because I paid all the invoices on my desk as soon as possible so I have nothing on my desk and I've been a really productive employee. Well, that's what they think. And how you think might be very different to how they think. So I have a question. Why pay an invoice on day four if it has 30-day terms? You're just emptying your cash out of your bank account, giving it to someone who doesn't really want it because they've given you 30 days to pay it. And if they've given you 30 days, that means they don't complain if you don't pay it until almost 30 days. They're not going to complain because they stipulate it. It's their choice to stipulate that. Just like you, you issue an, in, an invoice for 30 days. You don't mind if someone doesn't pay until day 28. You mind if they pay after day 30. 
but you don't mind if they pay day 20, day 25, day 28 because they're paying within terms. This is a quite ethical thing to do. So a great accounts person will pay one day before every invoice is due. And they're very, very good at lining them all up and sequencing them all and go, well, I haven't got to pay any today because none of them are due. None of them are one day before due. Fantastic. So this is a red hot tip as well because it's changing the perspective of the accounts person of them thinking they're doing a good job to doing a great job based on helping the business, not necessarily hurting the business. They may be doing a great job themselves, but it's not positive for the business. It's detrimental to the business. All right, strategy number five, what retailers and a lot of service and manufacturing businesses do as well. This is the most disastrous thing you can do to net profit margins and therefore cash in a business, yet it's the most common thing I see businesses, especially in retail, do. Their strategy to win sales, to get sales, is to offer a discount. And they use that word, discount, 10 to 50% discount. The word has got a negative connotation long term. When you take a 10% off, it wipes out the business's net profit margin. So that 10% wipes out 90% of businesses' net profit margin because 90% of businesses don't even have a net profit margin of 10%. So when you do 10% off, you've just wiped out your net profit margin. You just made a big loss. And that's not profit. That's that's a loss. That's, you're certainly not making profit when you discount because you're wiping out all the profit you had from the sale by doing that. So what happens when these stores, these retail stores especially, doing the 20 to 50% off sales? They're making nothing. Now they think they're creating loyalty. They think they're get, getting people to come back. But let me ask you this. The last place you bought a discount, did you go back to again and pay full price? I'll be extremely surprised if you said yes because from surveying hundreds of people over the years, they go, no, I just go and find a discount somewhere else because there's so many of them. Why would I want to pay full price? So what the retailers collectively, not individually, but collectively are doing in our society, they're teaching us not to pay full price. They're trying to get sales, but they're discounting. And so you get so used to discounting, you think, well, I'll just wait for a sale. And they're happening so regularly now. You'd, we've been taught by retailers, don't pay full price because you don't need to, because there's always discounts running. So it doesn't create loyalty. It just drains your cash and your profitability out of your business. So there are a lot of other things you can do. I work with jewelry stores, which are, I would think are probably the most notorious for doing 50% off sales. And I, I remember working with a jewelry store that had a real big profit problem and the turnover was dropping. And I said, I'll work with you, but you've, you need to make this um, agreement with me that when I say we're going to do a strategy, you need to agree with it. She goes, yeah, sure. I said, well, you say that now, but we're not going to discount. She goes, but how am I going to get sales? I've got to do a January sale. I've got to do 50% off. I said, no, you're not because we're increasing your profit and discounting is not how you increase profit, even if your whole industry has a reputation for discounting. We're not doing it. But how am I going to make any money? How are we going to get sales? I said, easy. We're just not going to use the word discount. And we did. We put strategies in place that stopped discounting we just talked about add value buy a hundred dollars you get anything in this cabinet for ten dollars spend two hundred dollars you get anything in this cabinet worth twenty dollars we did add values and the profits went crazy she doubled her net profit in january compared to the year before yet a turnover wasn't that much higher because we weren't discounting profits doubled and she was shocked by that because she said i thought i had to discount i go yeah that's what your whole industry does but you do not need to do it and there are billion dollar retailers that do not do discount sales. They don't wipe 20 to 50% off and they get a lot of profit. So you can definitely do it. So it's something worthwhile looking at. Same with the retail, same with the service business. Someone says, can you give me a discount? And you say, oh, okay, I'll give you 10% off. You probably just wiped out your net profit margin and you've done all that work for that customer for free or probably a loss. That hurts your business. All right. So I hope you got some good things that you can apply in your business and you will be able to apply these strategies when you just put a little bit of thought into it sometimes, but hopefully you can apply all five or if you're not discounting, you can apply the four. So summarizing a webinar, what did we talk about here today? We talked about management is about developing three core skills with people, measuring and systems. That's management. 
We talked about how prices affect your margins the most and that affects your cash in the bank level the most. We want to get your margins up. I introduced you to my seven steps to implement these strategies, which is seven steps to business certainty, I call it. I'll talk about a little bit more about that a little bit later. I talked about the five strategies to double your cash in the bank. And what I'd like to now, if I can with your permission, can I show you how to seriously increase your net profit margin and then turn that into a way to get back the lifestyle you deserve where working is optional. Does anyone here like the idea of work being optional? Okay, so let me talk about the next step because I've just given you really refined strategies and just five, but I could give you a hundred really refined strategies and this is just one hour of our time or so. So let's talk about the next step. I'd like to introduce you to what I call the business certainty training course. And the reason it's called business certainty is because it gives you more certainty about all the decisions that you make in your business in regards to price, in regards to strategies, in regards to recruitment and team building and everything else. And we take hope out of the mix of you hope your business grows, you hope money comes in and say, no, forget hope. Let's put an end to hope. Let's put strategies in. And that's what this training is all about. It's the first complete course to give you everything to conquer your growth challenges and set your business up to operate without you using a seven step implementation formula. So what you're seeing on the right are the workbooks and there's seven subjects, seven workbooks, but then there's three additional ones which complement these first seven. So it's the seven steps to business certainty training and, and it's all in a systemized structure. So if you imagine a course where you receive strategies, training and solutions to have more cash, more time and control of your business. You get complete ready to use systems for team building, measuring and systems. The three core areas of management you're getting ready to use systems. You haven't got to go and figure it out yourself. You haven't got to go, gee, how do I measure? I don't know how to measure. Oh, how do I hire good quality staff? I don't know how to do that. Or what systems do I need? Where do I start? How do I how do I write job descriptions and org chart? I don't know how to do any of that. Well, that's why this training is so good because you're getting these ready to use systems included. No other training in the world gives you these as ready to use systems across all facets of managing your business. You get 50 plus of the best profit strategies for your specific business. We identify them. We say, all right, for your industry, there are six core types of strategies out of the 21 that we're sharing with you. So there's 21 types of strategies. That's a finite list. Then there's six that become a real priority that you need to implement in the top six order of implementation. Now let's give you 50 across all six of those areas and we'll identify your absolute best number one strategy that increased profits better than any other strategy we've ever seen with over a thousand businesses. So that's pretty powerful when you're getting those 50 strategies identified for your specific business in the training. You customize spreadsheets, measuring tools, and they're customized for your exact business. They're ready to use for measuring all aspects of your business, measuring sales, me measuring production, measuring cash flow, looking at your profit and loss statement, talking about cost of sales. We measure every aspect of your whole business. Included in the course are nine workbooks. Well, there's actually 10, so you get two review workbooks, which are two separate training sessions, and then you get a workbook companion to keep your notes in, but it doesn't really have content. So it's sort of nine workbooks to refer to for years, and I do mean years. When people finish this training, they say, gee, that was that was incredible. How much content, an enormous amount of content. I'll be using this stuff for years, and I'm glad I've got it in workbooks. I'll be going over these books for years, and they do. That's exactly what happens when, when we talk to clients three or five years later. You get 49 how-to templates and tools, measuring tools, spreadsheets. So these are the templates ready to use, fill in the gaps, and they're ready to go. You get seven excellent best marketing books I can find included in the book course. You get two hours of one-on-one -on -one time to review your chart of accounts. And that's pretty high-end stuff. It's called management accounting. It's where we say, all right, what should be in cost of sale and what shouldn't? You get a system for pricing to control your gross and net profit margins at the time of sale. Now, I know of one company that's international and they'll charge you $15,000 a year just to have one component of this whole training, which is a system for pricing. 
And they want to charge you $15,000 a year just to do one thing, which is that element. You get email support and review of your business's numbers. So we, we look at your numbers once you start putting them into the measuring tools. We give you that insight to show you where those profit leaks and profit opportunities are. You get answers to any and all your questions about growing your business. Should I promote this person into a supervisor or managing position, for example? Um, how do I find good attitude people? I don't know what to measure. What do these numbers mean if I do? I'm not real sure what chart of accounts and cost of sales are. Can you explain all that? All those sort of questions get answered. Every single question you can imagine that you'll get about your business now and in the future, every single one of them is answered from experience. Business Certainty is an online group training course, so it's not one-on-one, -on -one, which we find doesn't work too well. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But by putting people into a small group, and I don't mean 20 people in the group where no one talks and everyone just listens and nods their head. I'm talking about a group interaction discussion. So we're introducing content, then we discuss it, and then answer any questions, and then we go on to the next subject. And that discussion works brilliantly. So we meet for four hours of fortnight, half a day of fortnight, and it's video and audio. So we see each other like this picture. We can talk to each other, unlike this webinar where it's me talking and I can't hear a word you're saying, and I, I don't know if you're hearing me. I don't know if you're understanding it. You can't sort of say, Tim, can you please talk about that again? I didn't quite understand it. It's a video audio training, and that is where it's so much more effective as a training environment because we can discuss everything and it's two-way dialogue. And we run that for 15 sessions spanning seven months. That's the whole course. Like the like you see in the picture, we get all these workbooks. We go through nine different uh, subjects, if you like. We do a couple of reviews with our seven, and that goes over the seven months. So we discuss strategies. We talk about a systematic way of um, implementing it, and then... Two weeks later, because we've talked about it the first session, the next session we spend half an hour just reviewing it and talking about your experiences. And that creates a little bit of accountability and that accountability helps you to implement the content, stay very focused on doing it. The session schedule looks like this. So week one, building your vision and leverage. How to leverage your time. That's the first thing we talk about, how to get the best out of your team, how to leverage your time to free up your time from the very, very first session building your vision we give you that clarity the next one is team building and recruitment you may need to recruit great attitude new people as your business grows through this training so we're giving you that right up front then we introduce measuring that's two sessions so if you notice week one is one workshop session one of the seven the next one is two sessions the next one is two sessions we're up to week nine the next one is two more sessions on planning to achieve your goals. We give you business growth planning tools. We give you a tool to anticipate when you need to hire people before you need to. So it gives you really accurate planning. We spend about, we spend one session now. Um, we spend our half day session now reviewing everything you've learned and we find people want that break. So that's why that's included. Then it's systems for profit growth, two sessions, magic of measuring. Well, sorry, the secrets of sales and marketing two sessions and I, I call them secrets because very few businesses know this content that we teach for example 90 degree marketing uh, seven principles of influence all sorts of things that very few people know much about and then we talk about management how to leverage out of your business how to hire a general manager how to profit share with your team and then we do a final review and go over everything we've talked about and give you the long-term habits of phenomenal success in business and instill those in you there and we celebrate and the good thing is you're not left to guess you're not left to well there's a whole lot of stuff you figure out what to do off you go we know exactly what you know need to implement from our half day training we'll say here's your four to five tasks go and do exactly that and do it and look look at what happens when you do and they come out and go wow you're right gee amazing things are happening already because the content's so refined that's the effect it has any missed session can be watched on video and you can watch the videos at any time during and after the training. You can access that training information for years after because it's recorded and it's on video and it's available to you to go over. The value you receive in the business certainty training, we get 52 and a half hours of live interactive online training. You get your two individual one-hour phone calls or video calls to customize your tool, look at your chart of accounts, explain to you how to do anything that you're unclear of. That's all included in the training. 
You get seven months of email support. Sometimes clients even ring emails say, can I talk to you? We say, sure, we're happy to take phone calls. We just find that the content's so refined. The workbooks answer the questions so well that very rarely do we need to have extra phone calls, but sometimes it happens. But you get seven months of email support, looking at what you're doing, reviewing what you're doing, looking at your numbers, explaining your numbers, it's all included. You get nine workbooks with written and video instructions. Our measuring tools come with video instructions, so that way, instead of just listening to me talk about it or you trying to read it, you just watch a simple video, and then you stop, start, stop, start, uh, duplicate in the measuring tool what you're seeing in the video, it makes it really easy to set them up. You get a complete team building system of how to motivate, how to recruit, how to inspire, how to run team meetings, how to evolve your team to different levels. You get the full recruitment system. If you think about what a recruitment company you would charge, if you could even buy the system instead of them charging you five or ten or fifteen thousand dollars, you get that included in the training. And this works as well as any recruitment system you'll ever see. You get the ad, you get the selection criteria, you get everything in this system. You get the most powerful subject I believe there is to learn in business second to none, which is all about mastering, not knowing about, but mastering disc profiles. We learn to pick the profile of every person that you meet within a minute or two or three. You get the 50 strategies identified for your specific business. You get a full general manager recruitment system. It's a recruitment system on steroids because it's far more detailed than every other recruitment system. And you also get the job description with the identified KPIs that you need for a general manager. So there's no wriggle room. There's no chance of them destroying your business because they'll have responsibilities to do every single week. And that is to give you your measuring tools the management reporting system we give you in the training. So you always know if your general manager is doing a good job every single week. So it's a risk-free way of leveraging yourself out of your business. And you get a sales commission calculator and even a profit share system thrown in as well. So no business coaching program anywhere in the world gives you all this content. Usually you don't get much by way of systemize anything let alone full video instructions and everything that you're getting here. You'd be lucky to get two or three of these things included in any business coaching training program. Now, I'm only looking for five businesses. I kick off small groups. I only like five in a group at a time. And I'm only looking for five that are looking for those big profit jumps. Now, if you want to get a 20% increase in your profit the next 12 months, this isn't for you because that's too low. I want people that want to get 50 or 300% increase in their net profit, and that takes a bit more dedication, it takes a lot more learning. That's the type of business I want. So if you don't want to get much of a result, then go and read some books and go and find someone else to work with, because I want people that are really hungry. I want people that have got a burning desire. I want people that are serious enough about the success, they're going to commit to this thing and get stuck in. And the ones that do can have phenomenal increases in profit. It's really about the commitment for the business owner. So if they're not committed, we're not going to get the results because we can't force you to use the content. So if you've got big goals, big ambitions, big profit aspirations, fantastic. That's the sort of person that we want in this training. We have a minimum criteria for eligibility because this training is not for everyone in every single business. And here it is. We want you to have some experience in business. We would consider you if you had two years, if you have got a really good attitude and you got some other criteria in place. But we prefer three or five or 10 years because the more experience you've got, often the more you appreciate what the content is and you're more willing to implement it. The other thing is we want you to have a half million dollars turnover. Now, again, I can be flexible with a little bit lower figure, but you need to have employees so you can leverage with the team building and other activities that we teach. If you've got no employees, then it's not going to work for you. If you're $200,000, I'm sorry, you're not eligible. You need to get up to the three to four preferably minimum, uh, more like 500,000 minimum. Um, and if you got two or three, five employees, fantastic, ideal. That's our criteria. Enrollment is after a phone chat about your business's profit potential. I wanna talk about your business and I wanna talk about your profit potential. And that's just a casual phone chat. Now you can be anywhere in the world. If you're listening to this on a recording, that's fine. You're welcome to apply if you're ticking our criteria. And look, let's have a chat. That's all I want. And there's some background details that you need to fill in and that's what that website gives us. And it gives us your phone number, gives us your email, gives us your business name and your website. 
so we can just have a quick look at your your business and um, work out a time to have a chat and let's talk about your business and see what's going on now you can be anywhere in the world if you if you're watching this on a recording then fantastic we can work with businesses anywhere in the world because of the time zone differences we can either do the morning or the afternoon session with our training and that way we can work with businesses anywhere in the world so business certainty training the value of this is well over thirty six thousand dollars because I've trained 35 business coaches internationally and I watched the majority of those start charging three thousand dollars a month in their first year of coaching so I know that that's a general figure that uh, the majority of business coaches are charging and and if they're experienced I've, I know ones that are charging four thousand dollars a month and six thousand dollars a month if they're very experienced now the good thing is I'm not going to charge you that much I could because this training is superior to any of those other business coaching companies running around even the franchise companies don't have this content I know because I've, I've been in the industry long enough to know what the competitors are offering so as the training is online and it's in a group plus you get a couple of hours on one-on-one uh, -on -one, I'm not selling my time now whereas business coaching is I'm selling my time and if time is my limitation then the only way for me to make more money is to charge you more so you get the full seven months training for a greatly reduced price so this is five businesses only and we are kicking off groups we don't kick them off every every day of the week and every week we kick them off with the capacity that we can handle so when we kick it off then it's first in best dress hundred dollar deposit that's hundred dollars Australian gets you confirmed and that's your place secured and yes it is tax deductible and the price is just seven hundred and sixty dollars per month and only for seven months so one like coaching which is three thousand a month sign here contract 12 months this only goes for seven months and it's over seventeen hundred and sixty dollars per month and yes that includes GST hundred dollar deposit is all you need to secure your place all right so let's talk about the cost of your business the greatest cost of your business is not the price of this course the greatest cost of your business is what I call opportunity cost business owners are struggling for years and yet this seven months training can obliterate conquer those sort of struggles that you have in business with staff with time with money those things can be smashed and therefore it's what you're not making let's say you make a hundred thousand dollars profit in this well that small amount of 1760 times seven months that's tiny compared to 100 grand but you're gonna make 100 grand the next year 150 grand the next year and the next year and the next year and it'll start increasing it's costing you a fortune not to do this training the price is tiny compared to the cost of not doing it so attendees are regularly increasing their profit by hundred thousand dollars without any marketing cost or risk or capital what's it costing you not to attend now there's a lot of video testimonies you can go and check out for yourself go to profittransformations.com and start looking at all the video testimonials there there's your evidence and these are professionals like accountants endorsing this and see how many business coaching companies have accountants endorsing the coaching the training that's being provided by the company and you'll be lucky to find any anywhere in the world so when you get professionals endorsing something with their business name and their full name being given in the video that's something that you can trust so will it work for your business it's a coffin it's a common question that I get asked a lot well all of these businesses came through our training and increased net profits by 50 to 3,000 percent in less than five months now, if it works for a wholesaler a retailer a manufacturer a service business and hundreds and hundreds of businesses through 17 years of training 1260 plus clients then it will work for your business too all right so if you've got any questions fire away the business certainty training tends to kick off two weeks from now so the people that are watching this fantastic love to have you kicking off in two weeks time there are limited numbers and when you kick off in two weeks you need to pay a week in advance because we don't release the content until we're paid for the first session the $1760 for that if you want to put to finally put an end to your time your staff and cash struggles double your profit and enjoy life more this is exactly what you've been looking for if you've been wondering if there's a training out there that specifically addresses your challenges in business this is it
So if you've been wondering and waiting for a course or a, some sort of coaching program for a lot of years because you're wondering if something's relevant for you and whether it's going to work, this is what you've been waiting for. This is it right here, right now. This is your golden opportunity. First thing gets the training spots. Maximum of five business owners. And uh, yes, I do have a question about partners. Thank you. Well, there you go. Partners are free. We don't charge extra for business partners. They must be from the same business, obviously. You can't say, oh, but my friend, sorry, your friend's paying full price. Not in your business. Completely different business. But if your business partner wants to come along, sure, they can tune in. They get the training live. They get the workbooks for free. It's all included. We don't charge double. So yeah, thanks for the question. And yes, partners are free. So there's your website, wprofits.tv slash meeting. Go there, put in some basic details and let's have a chat. I like to reward people that take a perceived risk. And so I always over deliver on what people expect. That's what you'll get in a seven months training, a lot more than what you expect. So I like to give you more than you expect and I'll give you more than you expect in their very first meeting. So apply for that now and get a pleasant surprise and I'll look forward to talking to you then. So all the best with your success.